there is this way of thinking that a lot of people have adapted that have they've made it their way of thinking and that's the thinking that as long as you're transparent and you don't give any false information about how you feel then you are all right we call this honesty now look it is true that that is written in the bible that you shouldn't give a false testimony but it's also written that you shouldn't throw your pearls before swine so you so you have to consider that also here's another thing when is something a lie look if you're in town there may be two thousand things happening at the same time that you're there so when also when someone asks you you were in town what happened what are they looking for which information because nobody is capable of of articulating everything that happens while they were in town nobody that's theoretically and even practically impossible and of course anytime you you tell something you highlight the important information and the less important information you leave aside then you have people say well a half truth is a whole lie when is something a half truth look what is a lie according to the bible because that's what a lie is a lie is any way of thinking that can't be defended with the gospel and, and that means any way of thinking that is not in agreement with the Messiah. That's a lie. And when you operate in such a way of thinking, you are operating in a lie. Or as I mentioned before in another summary, you are operating in offense. Because you are in unbelief. And when you are in unbelief, you are labeling the Most High as a liar about that stronghold or that myth of honesty let's just think about it for a while we tend to value people that are transparent we call it honest but we really mean transparency for example i hear someone said if you really don't like someone you have to tell someone that you don't like them that's better for you and for them now hold on a moment i already explained that whole thing of not liking do liking this whole idea that you project pain onto someone and then use that image of that individual that you have to exclude someone in real life that's wrong but people say you have to be honest about it you can be transparent about it or what if you have bad thoughts about someone that you uh, it's evil you shouldn't have bad thoughts but we tend to defend how we feel and, and by being transparent about it we tend to gain favor by saying at least we're honest look whether a bomb explodes openly that means through a rocket or when it's dropped by an airplane or a bomb explodes covertly it was hidden between bags it's still a bomb exploding it's still harm that took place you can't say well at least when the bomb was being dropped in open air it was honest it was an honest attack no it's still an attack but we tend to validate and reward people that are transparent about how they think and feel now don't get me wrong transparency about how you think and feel is it is relevant however just because someone is transparent or what we call honest doesn't mean someone is praiseworthy let's go through through the bible very quickly did the most high i mean did, did god honor Adam, when Adam was honest, that Adam was afraid, and that, that's why Adam um, ran away. Adam was transparent, what we would call honest, but did God honor his honesty? What about Eve? Or better, what about Satan himself? When you, you read the book of Job, Satan was very honest about what he was doing on the earth. Did God honor Satan's honesty? Or let's go further. When um, the people bef in the time of Noah, before the flood, they were open and honest in rebellion against the Most High. Did he honor their honesty by saying it's their free will, they have a right to choose, so I need to back off? No, no, no. 
God honored Noah who was in agreement with him. That's who God honors, who are in agreement with him. Nowhere in scripture can you find anywhere where God honored plain transparency without any regard to his word. I mean, look, if someone says bad things to say about you, they're operating in darkness. If they, if they hold, if they um, restrain themselves because they don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, it's not about other people's feelings. They just don't, don't want the consequences of openly speaking out or openly acting out. But they still have that bad way of thinking. So if they pretend to be on good terms with someone when they're not, you can call them a hypocrite. But hold on a minute, the one that openly admits how they think and feel, even though, though it's wrong, that's also a hypocrite. You know why? Because they are pretending that they are all right by being open about this. But it's not all right to be open about something that's evil. As I mentioned before, God never honored any creature that was not in agreement with him when they were open about their disagreement with him. He never did. So, why are we honoring transparent evil? A hypocrite is defined as someone to claims to be something they're not. When you are reflecting a lie and you're holding on to it, you are pretending that you are right by operating in that lie. You're pretending to be right because you are transparent about it, but you're not right. So, that's also hypocritical. People often reduce hypocrisy to, um, to just inconsistency, to, well, as I mentioned before, people that say something and do another, but even if you say something and do it and it's not in agreement with Christ, it's still hy hypocritical. Any way of thinking that God, that's not in agreement with the Messiah, that's not in agreement with the gospel, it's a lie. And to continue in a lie, and to and to be so-called honest about it and think that just because you're honest you deserve some mental that's that, then you're also a hypocrite because that's not true why am i repeating this it's because way too often we promote we don't do it let me say most people don't do it consciously they're not aware they're doing it nevertheless they're doing it they are promoting they're validating and rewarding transparent evil when Jesus came to the shores of Gadara, when he spoke to, those to that legion inside the demon-possessed man, the legion was open and honest. They were even open and honest. They were open and honest that they were not happy to see Jesus over there. They were open and honest that they didn't want to be punished. They, didn't, they, they, they wanted to inhabit the swine. So the demons were honest. Did the Messiah Honor those, those demons? Did he praise them and say, well, I'm glad you guys are honest? No. Absolutely not. When, when later the people of Gadara pleaded Jesus to leave, to leave their territory, Jesus left. Not because he validated their so-called free will. Not because he acknowledged their choice. No. It's because Jesus did not want to participate in their dishonorable conduct. They were holding on to darkness and they were persisting in it. So Christ gave them over to their own. I say he gave them over to their own stupidity. But not because they had the right to. But what do we often do? We tend to say, well, it's their choice. You need to leave. Okay, look. As a believer, you're still a, you're a human being that's born again, you don't have the capacity the out of yourself to make someone change their mind. So you remove yourself when someone has made up their mind about something because you're not going to cause conflict and trouble. That does not mean that you agree with them. Whenever you say, whenever someone decides to, whenever someone makes up their mind about something and it's not in agreement with Christ and even it's not even agreement with reality, 
and we say it's their choice and we validate that they have a right to make that choice, we are honoring them making that choice. Even if we don't agree with the choice, we are honoring them making that choice and we are, are, we are basically um, rewarding their darkness by giving validation to it. Look, there are many strongholds. I'm not going to make some, I'm not going, I've spoken about this stronghold of honesty quite often. In this summary, I want to make plain that honesty out of itself, or let me say transparency, is a good thing, but only if it's in agreement with the Messiah. Any form of transparency that does not agree with the Messiah is evil. I mean, again, go through scripture. Where do you find God, where do you find Jesus? Where do you find the prophets who were led by the Holy Spirit ever honoring someone, someone that was transparent but not in agreement with the Messiah, both in the Old and New Testament? Where do you find it? So if God does not honor uh, the transparency of wickedness. Why do we? Well, that's all for now. May the, may the peace of Christ be with you. Shalom.